This is Johnny Wrestling or Johnny Takeover, as my shirt says. And listen, I want you to listen. Like, we're in a ball right now. It's crazy. It's loud. It's hectic. We're in New York City. But I want you to listen to No Holds Barred Network. So, in saying that, how about we get to the Royal Rumble? I mean, <laughs> it was a long rumble, especially for me being there. That was a long ass rumble. Just saying, you guys thought it was long watching seven hours. You guys had the privilege of skipping the pre show. I had the privilege of being there for the pre-show, even even waiting while getting into the arena, waiting outside the arena, getting in there, waiting for the show to officially start. It was a long night for me. I'd say, it would, for me, the pay-per-view was eight hours in total. So you can tell why we are all dead by Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles, because plain, plain as day, we're exhausted by that point. They basically used it as a cool-down match, which I really don't agree with at all as well. Um, but anyways... Um, Let's get into the Royal Rumble, and uh, yeah, I guess we'll, oh, I guess we'll start off with the pre-show. When oh man, so the beginning of the pre-show started off with a match that wasn't announced. So there's two announced matches, and we ended up getting three. I don't know where the fuck this third pre-show match came from that started us off. It made no sense. The team. The, the... I wanted Bobby Roode to be in the World Rumble, but instead we get this match and this random team of who was in here, Razar and Scott Dawson. What so the I know that Akam, So I, I found out that Akam is hurt. But why didn't you just put the revival together? Why wasn't there just a, a random revival versus you know Gaiden? I think that would kind of made a little bit more sense. I know it's been repeated, but the main roster is notorious at repeating shit and doing rinse and repeat. Why didn't you just do that? Why do we have to get Razar and Scott Dawson teaming together, and or Dash Wilder, whoever it was, and I, I don't remember because um, I really was, I literally was had minimal attention to this match. Um, what would have happened if they had won? So what? Scott Dawson and Razar now tag team so, champions, so and their tag team partners are so true? apparently the actual context of this match was if Razar and Dash Wilder, Scott Dawson, I remember which one. Um, I'm bad with names. Anyways, <laughs> uh, apparently if they had won, they would have each won title shots at a future date for their respective teams. Uh. Meanwhile, Akam's on the shelf for like three to six months, so that match is not going to be forever if they had a won. And Scott Dawson and Revival already had a match, and they, they lost. So what the fuck was the point of this pre-show match? It was so pointless. Like It was horrible. I felt bad for them. I, I really nope. didn't pay any attention to it. I didn't care. Sure, Gable and Rude won the the, the match. No shit. And Bobby Rude got on, Bobby Rude got on the plane for this. Which, by yeah. the way, I heard you saw Bobby Rude on the plane. Bobby Rude was two seats behind me on the plane, and I didn't want to make a big deal of it. I just tweeted at him. I didn't want to, you know. Obviously, when we got to the airport, the airport goons, these freaking people that follow and know where these people are landing. Going up to him, didn't even say hi. Just oh, can you sign this and can we have a picture? Like, leave the guy alone. You just had a shitty, horrible flight, long flight. He doesn't want get you know. I, I know he knows <laughs> he, it comes with the job, but leave him alone. Leave him alone. And he and he knows he's got a shitty match. Yeah. Ugh, they can't get any worse. So, yeah. anyways, um, sure they won. Who gives a shit? I think the best part of the whole match was the camera guy falling on the Gable and Bobby Roode <laughs> entrance. That was the best part. That guy, I, I, I caught it on the vlog, too. It's in there. If you guys go watch it. Cameraman trips over the little ramp, the little metal parts on the side of the ramps, and he fell over. Good good job, bud. Anyways, move on to the second pre-show match. Shinsuke Nakamura and Rusev. I feel like this match probably should have been on the actual main card. I don't like seeing a mid-card title on the pre-show. I feel like that should be just... Uh, to me, there should be one pre-show match, and the, the pre-show should be narrowed down to at least one hour, even a half hour. Two hour pre show is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> four. Yeah, four horsewomen. Um anyways, so Shinsuke Nakamura versus Rusev, US championship, and I will quote other podcasters here. 
and I will agree with them. This was all done because of the AEW effect. And if you don't agree with us, that's your own opinion. But I guarantee you the only reason Shinsuke Nakamura won the title here is because they don't want him to go anywhere, and they're trying to please the fans who are starting to take notice of AEW. There's no other reason why Rusev should have dropped the title here. You can't convince me otherwise. I just simply think the reason why Rusev dropped the title is because it just happened to be Sunday and not Rusev Day. It does happen. It rarely and ever happens, but sadly, like, Royal Rumble fell on a, two, on a Sunday. Yeah, I mean, it was a decent match. Obviously, with the ending with uh, Rusev hitting Lana and her injuring her foot, which played a factor into the Women's Royal Rumble. And Shinsuke taking advantage of that. Big Kinshasa to the back of the head. One, two, three. Shinsuke Nakamura is your U.S. champion. Sure. Why not? Yes. Last year's, the belt? last year's Royal Rumble winner gets a win on the pre-show. Yes. So this confused me because I thought that champions weren't allowed to be in the Royal Rumble. So does that I mean, mean just if you are a mid-card champion, you're allowed to, you're exempt? You're allowed to be in it? Well, no, I mean, because Bobby Lashley was in there. He's an intercontinental champion. Uh, the That's ones I mean, that are though. like it's just... the ones, the the ones that are really weird are the people who are in the main championship match like that night, and they still appear in there. That one year where Roman Reigns was in a uh, in a match with uh, what Kevin Owens for the Universal Championship, he mm-hmm. lost, and then he also appeared in the Royal Rumble. I was like, wait, he got a title match that night. Why is he still in the Royal Rumble? The infamous. Number 30th, that was heard around the world. It made no sense. Mm. But it was, yeah. So, so, yeah, Shinsuke winning. I'm telling you, it's all because of AEW. Guys sure. can agree with me, cannot agree with me. This is the, all part of the AEW effect. <laughs> well, There's if you no saw what happened, reason. If you saw what happened to him this week on SmackDown, Shinsuke should be freaking making it for the door. Oh, man. I don't he had know it what... for, what, a couple of days, and then he loses the U.S. title in a freaking botch? It was so bad. He might that as well was, walk to the back yeah. and say, hey, 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 Hadale, hold the door for me, dog. I'm out of this place, too. I have a funny feeling that we're going to no get a U.S. title English, match. Vince. I have a funny feeling we're going to get a U.S. title match next week, and I guarantee you Shinsuke mm. wins it back. I'm just saying. I get, uh, That was botched. There's no re- that was not meant because they horrible. kept wrestling after. <laughs> like They didn't horrible. stop and look around. They, they kept they wrestling. Ring, they didn't ring the bell. It was a lag. Like the ref called for the bell, and even the ring, the bell guy was confused, and he yeah. ringed it late. This is a botch. Don't guys, don't kid yourselves, guys. This is a botch. Oh my gosh! Uh, it, so yeah. Either that, or either that, or uh, Shinsuke is just sabotaging his own job to get out of here. <laughs> Which, by the way, it, a very interesting thing. Shinsuke Nakamura tweeted today, and it, the tweet simply just read. WCW, which for yeah. anyone, for anyone who remembers the Montreal screw job, Bret Hart yeah. after he got screwed over, spelled out the words WCW, and I'm telling you right now, dude, Shinsuke, just leave. Mm-hmm. Just leave. I, I think you do better. They got nothing for you. I'm just saying, like he, they've ruined him since he's been called up. So, uh, anyways, um, third pre-show match, Fatal Four Way for the Cruiserweight Championship, which I thought. Uh, What's his face was in it, and that's Cedric Alexander. I guess not. Um, but uh, decent match. I thought a lot of fans didn't really give a fuck, and they were getting out of their seats during this to go get some food before their Royal Rumble. And like this, this just proves right here that the two hundred five live guys are getting just they're not getting their time to shine on the main roster, and it sucks because no one pays attention. Um, and they should be getting more attention because they they're incredible athletes on two hundred five live. And I thought this match was really good. I thought this was good enough to be on the main show, to be honest. Um, so, decent match from all four competitors. A lot of good spots. Buddy Murphy with the obvious retain, although you would have thought that maybe Hideo Tommy would have won it here. I don't know if this triggered his re- asking for his release. This was very interesting that he asked for his release after this happened. So, uh, I don't know if he was let on that he was supposed to win the championship here and it didn't happen. So, I don't know if something could play in factor here. But Buddy Murphy retains. He's an incredible piece of talent. I don't know how that guy mm-hmm. is not on the SmackDown or Raw. Meanwhile, I know Mustafa Ali is getting the push on SmackDown, which is good for him because he's amazing too. But Buddy Murphy's just as good as him. I don't know why they haven't really transitioned him over yet. So, I think an alliance between him and Shinsuke Nakamura would actually have been really good. Even a great tag team, mm-hmm. you know, in in that division. But just to throw it out there, Hideo Itami 
And a lot of the Japanese wrestlers, they make more money in Japan than they do here in the States. And I, it's, it's, it, the reason why they're here is because, guys, WWE is a dream place for anyone. So just the fact that they got to be in this company is good enough for them. But at the end of the day, Hideo Itami, I mean, to drag his family from Japan down here and he's not getting a push and they make more money in Japan, I don't blame the guy for wanting to leave. Yep. You know? He'll probably go back so. to New Japan. Mm-hmm. If not, if he's not going to AEW, he'll go back to New Japan, which is fine with me. Um, anyways, move on to the main card. Start off with the SmackDown Women's Championship. This really got people into it. Um, mm-hmm. Besides the Rumble matches, with one of the longest matches of the night. Um, Asuka versus Becky Lynch. Um, man, the crowd was so Becky. This this uh, this Royal Rumble man, they were so behind her. She got, she even got the loudest pop in her. Uh, with her thing in the women's Royal Rumble, which we'll get to, but Becky versus Oscar for the women's championship and pretty decent match. Again, different kind of ending, which we didn't agree with. And I will mm-hmm. agree with Michael, mm-hmm. and I will let him talk about this ending because I agree with him full fledged here. All right, so for those of you who did see the ending, Asuka put on the Asuka lock, and then she uh, did the Asuka lock into a flip-over bridge. Now, it took me by surprise. Kyle, you obviously were surprised, and you were yep. in – you were probably qu- questioning what you were seeing because you were there. Like, and I saw I the reaction. Confused. I was, I was confused. confused. Too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I didn't think it was going to happen. I felt like it's the wrong move. Here's the thing. We already know that she's choosing Ronda Rousey to face at WrestleMania, but then – how do you go up against this woman whose main submission move is a tap out? And then you're basically – it really pushes Becky down a, a, a level because Ronda could basically go out and say, listen, if Oscar can make you tap, what chance do you have against me? You know, So right. if it was up to me, I would have had two, two possible endings. Number one – and Kyle had talked to, to me about this before we went on the air. It would have been a lot better if instead of tapping out, which is one of the worst things you can do in a match, it just basically means that you're not man enough to get to the ropes. Uh, no pun intended. You weren't <laughs> man enough to get to the ropes. But uh, we would have just had her pass out. Pass yeah. out. It means that you were not willing to give up. And even Becky Lynch could use that toward her advantage. She could be like, Ronnie, when I face you at WrestleMania, you're going to have to kill me. Because if I didn't yeah. freaking tap out to Asuka, I'm not going to tap out to you. That's terrible. That would have been great. Now, that's a big leverage that Ronda has on Becky now. And it would have made this, this, this would make me think that Charlotte's going to be added to this match. Because if, mm-hmm. the, if Becky had have not tapped out here, I would have been, okay, these girls are good to go one on one. Now that they've made Becky look weak like that, for sure, in some way or form, Charlotte is being added to this match. You'll, it's gonna happen. It's, it's without a, it's, they can't have a championship match at WrestleMania or a main event potentially without Charlotte Flair in it. You know, you gotta have the Flair name in there. If, if, if not, I can honestly, if, if they're not gonna go with Becky Lynch uh, versus um, Ronda Rousey versus Charlotte triple threat match, I would predict it's gonna be Charlotte versus Oscar mm-hmm. in a rematch. I can honestly see um, – let's see here. Assuming uh, – keep an open mind, Kyle. Check this out. Assuming Bailey and Sasha pick up the Women's Tag Team Championship at the Elimination Chamber. That's okay. two out of four people from the four horsewomen who have belts, Tag Team Championship. Bailey and uh, Sasha now have belts. Sh- assuming Charlotte beats Asuka at WrestleMania, sadly, again, that means three out of the four horsewomen have belts. Then in the main event – if you can picture it, all the horsewomen come out with their belts, no. helps Becky Lynch beat Ronda Rousey because she's going to go off and have babies. And then, just like DIY at the end of TakeOver, you're left with the image of not only are the women in the main event of WrestleMania, but it goes off the air. Four horsewomen, all four, four yeah. holding titles. It is going to be the biggest talk of the town. Vince yeah. loves publicity. He loves social media. He loves people talking, whether it's good or bad, or seeing Alexa Bliss naked, whatever, or <laughs> Nia Jax getting beaten up by men. I guarantee you it will be the most trending thing for weeks, the fact that the four horsewomen are here and they're all holding titles. Mm-hmm. Guarantee That'd you. That would be dope. That would be dope. I'd be okay with that. Be one hundred percent okay with that. Uh, Michael Chow creative right there, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, you know what, I agree with that. 
So, again, would not agree with the way that match ended, but Asuka retaining the Women's Championship here. Going to make sure to see what they do from here, like going with your prediction here, because Becky's obviously chosen Ronda. We know that for a fact now. And now Asuka is left with no contender for WrestleMania. So, hopefully, your prediction... I, I'd love if your prediction came true here. That'd be dope. So, I hope something cut- like that happens. Because Charlotte broke the streak, so Charlotte can easily uh, man- manipulate Oscar and giving her the match by saying, "I beat you. I beat the streak. You're not right. man. You're scared that if I face you at WrestleMania, I'm gonna beat you again. So then that will sucker right. Oscar and saying, "Okay, you got the match because I can beat you." And then we'll okay. see. Okay. A rematch would be good. So I like it. Um, yeah, I like it too. So at like a fast lane or elimination chamber or maybe at Mania. Like you okay, yep. so you say like at Mania, then mm-hmm. they are on night that shit happens. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so we moved on here with the Miz and Shane McMahon. Ugh. Curse of the bar. I really didn't mm. give two craps about this while I was there. I this was another match where I pulled my phone out and sat there on my phone. I take the, the the Shane McMahon entrance just for the vlog and like, yeah, I'm done with this because I don't care about this because I already I already saw rumors that the Miz and Shane McMahon were going to win the championship belts here and. Sure enough, Miz and Shane McMahon are our tag team champions for whatever reason. I thought their whole thing here was to revamp the, the, the tag team division and get it going. This is not a way to get it going. As much as you guys out there think this is great and it's it's fun seeing these two as a champion, they do the whole dad thing. Ugh, it it drives me nuts, for especially for a guy who's really into the in-ring product rather than the entertainment factor. This is obviously playing to the entertainment factor. And everyone's like, oh, well, good for Shane McMahon, his first championship title. Me, 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 me. I'm like, actually, it's not his first championship title. He's held the Intercontinental and Hardcore title before. So let's kind of pump the brakes on that first. Two, but he shouldn't be winning a championship belt at his age now. He Just shouldn't now. even be in the ring. He's like no. 47 when people like John Cena are trying to retire at 41. I, Wasn't that I the don't... main purpose of this whole, like, you know, refresh of the, like, the McMahons taking over just to stay in the background and to, you know, control creative. Why is Shane McMahon putting himself in a tag team and winning the tag team championships? This doesn't make sense to well, me. Well, according to him, KFAD, when he was a little child, right, the mm-hmm. first title he ever wanted to hold was the tag team championship. And why is The Miz involved in this? Then go buy should... a replica belt. Don't fucking do this and it's sacrifice <laughs> exactly. television. Shane, you can have joined the elim- uh, the Elimination Chamber women's tag team match. It's all about intergender wrestling nowadays. But uh, mm. And then The Miz is shamefully thrown in this match because his father has never been proud of him before. But he will be proud of him if he wins the tag team titles because uh. his dad was never proud of him when he was the WWE champion. But getting the second-rate title belt off a failing division on the worst – Lowest rated show, not more than Raw, will make my father proud. Absolutely and you know what? Trash. And you know what, K Fab? He was proud. Yes. Great job, Miz. Yes. Great. Fan, like here, round of applause. Way to sacrifice Woo! tag team wrestling. Woo! Way to fucking give up the spot to guys who deserve the fucking championship belt. Guys who have, or tag teams that put in the work to try to make this division great. And you guys were like, oh, we're going to do a fresh start in this division because AEW is doing tag team wrestling different. They're going to focus on tag team wrestling. We're going to focus on it. See, give the titles to The Miz and Shane McMahon. Give me a fucking break. You can honestly see Shane McMahon and Miz win the title belts. And then the next week on SmackDown... Have the Usos win the number one contendership match to face them while Sanity's in catering, just going, What the fuck are we doing here? Killing Dane took Is a shot. Is AEW hiring? Hideo! Yeah. Hideo, are they hiring? Yeah? yeah? Fuck, we're out of here, man. Even Killing Dane tweeted out, uh, Sanity? Question mark, question mark, question mark? Yep. And then Alex <clears throat> Wolf said, This is shit. <clears throat> mm hmm. Like, these guys should have just stayed in NXT. Like, this is why we fear, and it was why we said it many times on this podcast, why we fear NXT talent getting called up to the main roster because they're going to get ruined, a.k.a. Sanity is already one of them. So, you know, it sucks. And I, 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 you don't, for you people who enjoy the entertainment, you know, you guys, you're entitled to your own opinions and you're you're enjoying this, cool. For me, who cares about the in-ring product and don't want to see it sacrificed, I fucking hated it. That's just my opinion. So it is what it is. We'll move on. Uh, Ronda Rousey, Sasha Banks, Women's Championship here, which we just kind of saw in the background there on your TV. So um, crowd, like we said, very, very heavy booing 
Ronda Rousey mm. here. Um, and very, very behind Sasha Banks for obvious reasons. I thought this was a pretty decent match. Um, very, like, very, very physical type of match. I thought we got a lot out of both these girls. Again, another decision at the end where I'm like, hmm. This was tough for me because I think I chose Ronda Rousey to retain even though I wanted Sasha to win. So I mm. really wanted Sasha Banks to win here. And uh, the fact that it did Rousey, I was not shocked. So I picked Rousey in that case, and she ended up winning. Don't like that she tapped out. Uh, she, she she didn't. She um, Well, Sasha tapped out on the outside of the ring when the oh, ref was, the was outside, down. Right. But then when they when they got back into the ring, uh, Ronda beat her by pinfall yeah. with that her her imitation yeah. Olympic slam yeah. move. Sorry, I forgot about that. Um, yeah, still, I didn't... The ending kind of made Sasha look weak in a way to me. I was mm. just like, hmm. Like, I know they... they, they uh, I just, mm, it, I was really cringing about this ending. I knew Ronda was going to win, but I'm like, oh, they could have done a better job. Um, but then the big thing here was the the four she gave Ronda Rousey uh, at the end there after the handshake. So, and uh, we kind of got, kind of got it. It was caught off camera on Raw when uh, Bailey mm-hmm. faced Ronda Rousey, where she saw Sasha coming up and she gave her the four. So there was some, or no, it was Becky. It was Becky coming, right? Yeah, it was Becky Lynch mm-hmm. coming to the ring. There's, a, there, there, before. there's actually a video on the WWE YouTube channel that actually highlights this. But, yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's getting to a point where it's like they're kind of making it too predictable about my prediction for WrestleMania. It's like, guys, mm-hmm. just kind of, you know, let it be a little surprise. Otherwise, when it does happen, my prediction, they're like – I think that's why they're well, giving subtle been, hints. They're just doing the four. They've been hit, gonna... hinting yeah. at it every single week. So mm-hmm. uh, this doesn't surprise us. But, yeah. Hey, so. WWE's known for uh, pulling the trigger. So, yep. again, Ronda winning, sure, you know, it is what it is. Um, she got booed again, leaving. <laughs> she got really, Ooh. you guys caught it off camera, like, when they, they they transitioned to the promo, when she's walking up the ramp, <laughs> so many boos when she's walking back up the ramp, it was ridiculous. By the way, there are a lot of times where she gets booed, and she kind of, like, she she's kind of, like, really, like, sometimes she even talks back to the fans. Yeah, like she's but triggered, I'm like, yeah. For so-called WWE super fan, dude, you know why they're doing this, okay? You've seen Roman Reigns, you've seen Braun Strowman, you you you've seen why people, you seen Nikki Bella, you seen why people right. get booed. But when it happens to you, you're like, what? Why? I'm a super fan just like you, right? Why are you booing me? Horrible. Let, Horrible. let me go. Let me go kiss my husband because I gotta do that after every pay per view oh, win. Man. Come here, baby. A lot of people gave her shit there. When they showed that on camera, and the crowd, the crowd's like, "Boo, boo, 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 boo this woman, boo, boo, boo this woman." Um. <clears throat> anyways, so got into the uh, women's Royal Rumble match that went for an hour and twelve minutes. This is a very, very long match. Um. Interesting. Uh. I'm just gonna point out a couple of things here. Uh, we had about uh one two. One, I guess you can count the because they're, they're they're labeled as free agents here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight NXT people show up, Ooh. including one NXT UK uh, lady. So NXT was really represented in this match and also the men's match. So out of NXT, we had Lacey Evans, Nikki Cross, who were labeled as free agents. Uh, uh, Xia Lee, mm. uh, Kari Zane, Candice LeRae, Casey Catanzaro, uh, Iro Shirai, and. Re- uh, Rhea Ripley from NXT UK. Uh, mm-hmm. So very, very well represented here. Um, I guess the person with the longest time, I believe, was Natalia, maybe. Yeah, she lasted 56 uh... minutes. So she was the longest time. Second longest time was Ember Moon with 52. And the third longest time was 50 minutes by Charlotte Flair. Mm-hmm. And I sh- we should probably point out that... Uh... Charlotte Flair got the most eliminations with five, so she yeah. now technically currently ties can. Uh, what, um, oh my gosh, what's what's Undertaker's uh, Michelle McCool's Michelle record McCool. of five yeah. eliminations? So there you go. Um, so we start off with Lacey Evans at number one, which is interesting. I thought number one would be someone different, but Lacey Evans representing NXT or now uh, a Raw member of Raw or SmackDown. She's a free agent. He really hasn't settled on a brand yet. Um, very little surprises. It was more NXT heavy than surprises. We really didn't get any uh, legends. We had Maria Kanellis in there. Um, other than that, 
not really anybody else. No, nope, uh, I, I totally disagree. How can you forget about the ultimate legend of all time? Vince McMahon's illegitimate son, Hornswoggle. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the big spot was Just... Lena Vega hiding in the ring. Because, you know, in the back of my mind, anyone that goes under the ring, you're on Max and thinking Hornswoggle. So I'm like, eh, Hornswoggle's probably, they'll probably do a spot with Hornswoggle, maybe. Then it actually happened. I'm like, oh, shit, they actually did it. And they had her uh, chase Lena Vega. And then uh, eventually chased into the ring, and eventually Vega got eliminated, and then chased. I think she chased Selena Vega up the uh, up the ramp. Um, I mean, I thought it was a pretty decent women's Royal Rumble. They're getting better and better. We had a couple of the unreal spots with Naomi, which people were like, "Oh, oh," because she was on the one barrier that was literally like moving. And I'm like, "Man, if that thing collapses because of a bot, she's done. Like, they have to like eliminate her." And then she ends up jumping to the steel steps. And then the – actually, I think the better one was uh, Casey Catanzaro mm. showing off her a- acrobats from her American Ninja show that she was on. And then the way she, like <laughs> – she, like, did that, like – I don't know what you want to call that when she was on the ring post. He's able to flip her body. Like, she is so athletic. It's insane. Um, so I thought that was a cool spot as well. It's, Big it's story. very ir- – it's very ironic because last year and this year, inclu- uh, inc- now including uh, Casey Contenazaro, last year Naomi, she saved herself, got back into the ring, was, and was immediately eliminated by Nia Jax. This year, same thing happened. Naomi got back into the ring and was immediately eliminated by Mandy Rose. And then Casey Contenazaro did the exact same thing. She got back into the match and was immediately uh, eliminated by Rhea Ripley, so I don't oh, know what's so, going on cool with this spot, trend. But no, we're gonna get you out. Screw you, you out of here. So, yeah. uh, obviously, the big story was when, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Lana was making her entrance. Um, her foot was not a hundred percent. She was limping to the ring. Uh, didn't make it up all the full way up the ramp, and then all of a sudden, there's people around her. She couldn't walk anymore, and then Becky Lynch comes out. And uh, the crowd just suddenly went nuts. Finley's there, and she's like yelling at Finley to let her in the match that Lana can't go on. And uh, if you make it out, if you guys watch it really closely, she makes it. She goes, "I'm Irish, you're Irish. Let me edit that match." <laughs> and then it, Finley's like, "Huh? Well, go ahead." And then her music starts, and literally, this was like Stone Cold level pop. It was so loud in that arena. I, I honestly. I was deafening. I couldn't hear anything else but the crowd war at that point. It was, dude, Becky's got the potential to be the stone cold of this woman's division. Her badass, the man thing is perfect for her, and she should continue that. She's got that potential to be a stone cold like character in the woman's division for for her future. So I, 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 will, I will say this. Uh, this is a little bit of a spoiler alert later on when we talk about the men's. If instead of Nia Jax, if Becky Lynch had come out instead of Nia Jax and ended up winning the Royal Rumble in the men's, I would have been perfectly fine with it. Like, honestly, they'll, that would they'll be find insane. that it would make history. It would have been the craziest thing ever. It would have been a way if you wanted to do the triple threat at WrestleMania, you could have had Charlotte win the women's, then have Becky win the men's. Oh, Hashtag yeah. Maka Child Creative. And Seth Rollins, we'll, we'll think of a way for him to get into the match, it's a, a match at Elimination Chamber to face Brock. But it would have been so great. She tossed John Cena out of the ring on SmackDown yep. a month ago. So why not have Becky Lynch win? It would have been so and, great. Oh, my God. I actually – no word of a lie, Michael. I actually had visions of that happening. You know what I had a vision of? Do a, a crazy spot. Have the last two people, Becky Lynch and Braun Strowman. I don't know mm-hmm. how they would do it, but have Becky Lynch fucking scoop slam oh. Braun Strowman and then, like, toss him over. the Like, I don't think she can lift him that hard. Maybe just scoop slam him, <laughs> but then, like, you know – kick him kick Braun Strowman over the rope but like do a spot like that where the people are just going oh my fuck like uh, I think that that would have been a better idea than what they did in the men's one um, mm-hmm. but uh, Becky Lynch getting to this match over Lana ends up winning when it was just her and Charlotte even though Nia Jax hurt Becky Lynch's knee which is playing a factor hurt. now quote unquote kayfabe hurt her knee and uh, ended up eliminating Charlotte crown went nuts Becky won <laughs> this were the, this was what was hilarious because I I mentioned this in the vlog, and I noticed it right away, and I tweeted about it when I got into the arena. There was no WrestleMania sign. Mm-hmm. so But it was at the arena, in a talking stick arena. So to me, I'm going, okay, so if it wasn't a talking stick arena, you're telling me you couldn't hang it up 
in that arena, Chase Field, which is right next to the Talking Stick Arena, and transfer it over? You're telling me you couldn't do that? Give me a fucking break. That's bullshit. So they had it just on the Jumbotron. They had Becky point at the Jumbotron. Oh. They had Seth Rollins do the same thing. I'm like, Ooh. and that no self fill give it the middle finger <laughs> in the vlog, <laughs> saying this is like it was laziness. It was laziness. It was um, bad. So Becky wins the Women's Royal Rumble. Good for her. Mm-hmm. The second ever Women's Royal Rumble. There's only been two. So Oscar and Becky are now our leading uh, members of the Women's Royal Rumble winners. So good for Becky. I think that was the right decision. I was. I was great with that. That's two women's Royal Rumbles that they gave us a winner that we wanted. So, you know. Um, I, I would like to say I, I really don't like the fact that the Rumble are getting very, very predictable uh, because the moment that Nia Jax took out Becky uh, after Nia was eliminated, I said, well, she's winning. You know what I mean? They they do it yeah. so much to like go, oh, but we had to sell Becky Lynch as, as the ultimate underdog. Nia Jax just laid her out. And spoiler alert, they did the exact same thing to Seth Rollins later on in the men's. After Bobby Lashley was eliminated, he beat the hell out of Seth Rollins, sent him through the table. I'm like, well, there you go. Seth Rollins is winning. So They're making it way too predictable. Yeah. But love the winners. Talking NXT here, I think Lacey Evans had a really good showing in this Royal Rumble. I think they did, uh, they did, her, did do her due diligence and gave her a good showing in this one. I can potentially see maybe eventually a Charlotte and Lacey Evans feud. That would be dope. Mm-hmm. Um, Nikki Cross, I feel, should have gotten a little bit more of a showing. She was good, but I feel they could have done a little bit more with her. Uh, other than that, it was barely basic Royal Rumble. Becky winning. So um, we moved on here, and after this, it was they became the cool down match, which sucked. Because um, I really, I really was excited about Daniel Bryan, AJ Styles, and at this point, the crowd was dead, and I. I have two reasons why they were dead, and I agree with both of them. A, after how can you not be dead after a long ass day and getting to that point in the pay per view? You're fucking tired, and after cheering your ass off for the women's Royal Rumble, at that point you're just like, hey, like I'm exhausted. I was exhausted. Two, this is the slowest match I've ever seen from two competitors that could be doing mm-hmm. a lot better. Mm-hmm. And I tweet, I'm like, this is the worst. I'm like, if you and I tweet and I said, don't at me. If you don't think there would be holds back to competitors, just watch this match. These guys have the potential. If this was an NXT match, it would be match of the night, match of the year. But the fact that it was a WWE match and they were both held, they both held back here, you can totally tell. People are like, oh, no, it was good. It was great. Okay, it was a decent match, but it wasn't what it could have been. Both these guys have the potential to put on match of the night, which you should be doing. I don't care where spot it's in in the pay-per-view. You do a match of the night. If you have two guys that can go at it like that and produce a good match, produce a fucking good match. A, it's for your WWE Championship, which is your main prize. And B, if you have that type of talent, why don't you use it? I don't understand. Why do you want to hold it back? So to me, that's the two reasons why the crowd was so dead for this. So it was bad match placement on the card. And two, you're tired as fucking hell of seeing this bullshit where they want to hold wrestlers back when they have two great competitors in the ring. I I, I think they made a mistake because if you look at the match card, right, there weren't, if any, were there any? There was no match with a stipulation. So I think this would have benefited from maybe being like a no disqualification match or being like a a TLC match. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It it was just a regular match. I I, I thought the ending was kind of stupid to have Rowan come in here and do that. People were so confused. People I, were so, I, I, and I thought it was to me. I thought it was dumb as shit. It's it's like, it's another tag team that's broken up. Mm-hmm. Are you saying the bro, the Bludgeon Brothers are no, over done. now, or is Luke, done. is is Harper gonna now join, or is like I, I I if it was up to me, and I'd be giving out a lot of creative ideas, I would have had Sanity be the ones to help Daniel Brown. If you had to do it, if you had to have yeah. someone to help him, at least it's something for Sanity to do. You know what I mean? But. Daniel Bryan controlling the chaos yes. at yes. everything, right? And he debuts a new hemp-friendly belt on I Smackdown. love that belt. Like, seriously, it's so clean. It's hilarious. I can't you wait. Know I love the woodwork of the logo. Yeah. That's That was my favorite part. I, I could do without the stones, but that's all. That plays into, you know, Daniel Bryan's thing. But uh, I thought it was a, I thought it was a pretty decent-looking belt. It's hilarious. It goes well with what his gimmick is. So I'm buying that as soon as it goes on ShopZone. And that's gonna be the most the, sold out belt ever. 
By the way, a lot of people are already already saying since Daniel Bryan did a Alundra Blaze and tossed that belt in the trash, a lot of people think that when Daniel Bryan loses the belt, that they will officially have to make a new belt, and it's basically going to be the opposite of the Universal Championship. It's going to be an all-blue belt, which I hope they don't do. Don't do that. Don't oh, blue make me taste sick. it. Don't that'll do it. That'll make me sick. Don't do it. But anyways, like Daniel Bryan retaining the championship, mm, I mean... I pick. I'm pretty sure I pick. Yeah, Daniel Bryan to retain. It is what it is. AJ Styles could have won it here, but it's gonna be interesting. With the, I'm interested in what they do with the WWE title picture. I don't know what. I don't know if there's current plans of what's going on here. I have, I have a feeling it's gonna tie into Elimination Chamber or Fastlane. There's gonna be something to determine the who Daniel Bryan faces. Um, I haven't read any rumors on what's going on with that, so it's gonna be like a wait and see kind of thing. And that sucks because you think you'd have your WWE title picture already set in stone. They already have the Universal one. It's like, I, I hate how they push the Universal title over the WWE title. I don't agree with that. Um, until the, the Universal title can build credibility, your main title and main number one focus should be your WWE Championship. That thing has mm. historic prestige to it. You shouldn't be playing it down to this red roll-up looking belt that's lasted, that's only been around for three years. Two. So... A lot of people think it's going to be Daniel Bryan versus John Cena because look at the roster. Who's Daniel Bryan going to face? I, it better not be Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles again. I'd love to see a Mustafa Ali beat out the odds, become the underdog to win the championship opportunity and be like the underdog Daniel, and build himself up as the underdog that Daniel Bryan was when he first won the world championship. Okay. You know, it, it, that it, kind of storyline. Absolutely. If, if the main focus is seriously going to be the first ever woman's main event with Becky taking on Ronda Rousey, everything below that match could just be kind of like it doesn't have to be big. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if they want to do Daniel Brown versus Mustafa Ali, I'm, I'm with it. So, yeah, just let it. them go out of two. WWE, come on, stop pulling them back. You wonder why people are, are leaving. The main thing right now, from what I see, the people that want to leave the company is creative differences. That's it. It's not anything else. It's not like travel or anything like that. It's creative differences. They're having a problem with the creative direction of these stupid writing teams for whatever reason. That's why they want to go to AEW because AEW has said that they're letting their wrestlers create, like they're giving them the creative freedom to do what they want in their matches. They're not, there's not going to be a writing team for them. They're letting them do what they want. That's why they're going to be the alternative to this. So and I think it's going to be really successful. So anyway, speaking of the universal title, let's get into the match. Did get Demon <sighs> Balor. Because Demon know, Balor doesn't As soon win. as I seen it wasn't Demon Balor, I'm like, okay, well, this match is over. Brock Lesnar's <laughs> winning. I knew Brock Lesnar was winning as soon as they, as soon as Finn Balor, and I'm like, there goes my pick. I'm like, as soon as Finn Balor comes out and there's a fucking red shit there, I'm like, it's over. Why? I'm like, and it, it ends in typical fashion, under under, under 10 minute match. And it, it, it was a typical mm-hmm. Brock Lesnar match, although it was a little bit better. Not as good as AJ Styles and Brock Lesnar. That still was a, probably the best Brock Lesnar match to date. Mm-hmm. Um, this was it's still sort of decent. Only lasted eight minutes, though. Brock Lesnar retains, wins it over Finn Balor. <laughs> there goes Finn Balor's credibility. There's their little Finn Balor push. He's and now Seth Rollins is going to be facing Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. So there goes mm-hmm. Finn Balor. What the fuck do you do with him now? He comes, he goes over to Raw, and look what ha- fucking happens to him. He gets his ass beat. Poor, like I, I wouldn't be shocked if Finn Balor asks for his fucking release, man. Why does that guy want to stick around? He's not getting anything done on the main roster. Like, go back down to either NXT or go to AEW. Plain and simple. Literally, like, the day after he was involved in the main Universal Championship title, he's now putting a program for the Intercontinental title against Bobby Lashley. I'm like, man, did that go downhill real fast. But Poor guy, yeah. man. The guy is an right. exceptional piece so of talent. talent. You see what mm-hmm. he's done in NXT. And <laughs> he's been on the main roster a lot longer than he was in NXT. And <laughs> you just look at the both and you're like, man, it's it's a dramatic difference. <laughs> like, he was a main champion in NXT for a while and had match the year candidates with Kevin Owens and Shinsuke Nakamura and Samoa Joe. But then he comes up to the main roster and faces Baron Corbin for the whole year of 2018. <laughs> like... The guy, poor guy, man. The guy deserves a lot better, mm-hmm. a lot better than what he's uh, been given. So, if I win, I wouldn't be shocked if one of these days we hear uh, Finn Balor request his release, and then Darius going to pull some scummy shit and say, "Well, they're going to try to do what they're doing with Kenta now." I believe that they're doing, they're, or is Dean Ambrose? Or like, they're not it's not Ambrose, it's Kenta. That they're, uh, or sorry, Hideo Tommy. They're saying that. Um, 
they'll grant his release, but he he can't wrestle. They're going to give him like an unpaid release or something like that. Mm. I don't know what the, the it's basically what they did to Neville. So they're doing that to Hideo. They, they they say they're trying to do that to Ambrose. And by the way, there's a lot of stuff uh, circulating saying that they think Ambrose thing is just a work. And and I just want to say that his release is not until April. A lot of stuff can happen between now and April, and I don't care WWE released a statement saying that Dean Ambrose is essentially done with the company. If you guys remember a long time ago, CM Punk, before he faced John Cena in probably one of the best matches at Money in the Bank, it was saying that CM Punk was leaving, that he was done with the company, and he literally re-signed with the company the day of Money in the Bank. So, guys, between now and April... Dean Ambrose can always just say, I changed my mind, mm-hmm. I re-signed. So don't be surprised that Dean Ambrose is still well, here. Punk here, yep. Yeah, exactly. Um, or if it's the biggest work of all time, congrats on Dirty B for faking them out and, and him playing into, you know, they're, they're playing this game with AEW, you know. We're going to pretend like Dean Ambrose is going to you guys and we're going to do this whole storyline of people, you know, people are going to jump to conclusions, obviously, right? So mm. it's a smart tactic if it is a work. If not, good for Ambrose. Man, get the fuck out of there. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't seem like it's a pretty pleasant place to be recently, so uh, we'll see look what at, happens. Look at what he's doing. He turned heel, which is the thing that fans have been wanting for a long time, and then he's doing absolutely nothing. He loses the belt to Bobby Lashley in, like a, in a couple of weeks, and then they have Nia Jax beat him up on Monday Night Raw. I'm like, what is going on? Dude, just leave. Yeah. Just get out of here. Take Renee with you. Go it's have happy. babies. Just <laughs> Just get out of here. Do this whole mixed thing with Cody and Brandy. That could be a whole story. Um, Anyway, so move on. Main event, Royal Rumble. You know, I really thought Brock and Finn would be the main event, and I was hoping if it was, it would have been the Demon Balor, but we got this as the main event. Only three NXT guys in this one. We had Johnny Gargano, (laughs) Pete Dunne from NXT UK, and Aleister Black. Um, longest time was actually the winner of the Royal Rumble was Seth Rollins, who came in at number 10, who lasted 43 minutes in Ooh. this match. Um, most eliminations came from, I believe it was Drew McIntyre with four. No, uh, Braun Strowman with five. Uh, mm-hmm. Drew McIntyre had four. This is interesting, though, Michael. This is where I talked about uh, a certain individual earlier. The second longest person to last in the match was actually Mustafa Ali, who lasted 30 minutes in this uh, match. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is interesting. Um, so I think there, there's there's potential there. I don't think they would have made him last that long if they really didn't see anything with him. So he lasted long. He got eliminated by which we'll get into in a bit. Uh... Um, Oh, by the way, should we talk about uh, the two surprise entrances? Yes. Uh, what, one person, you, you wouldn't consider him a surprise entrant. I do. Uh, Kurt Angle, yeah. I consider him a surprise entrant. And do you want to talk about the other surprise entrance, Kyle? The double F, double so, R, um, double T. We start T. off with Elias, which I thought was a pretty good number one. I thought the mm-hmm. whole thing what they did with the ring, he was really over, the crowd was really hot, and then he... The weird thing was to me, Michael, is I thought he was a baby face. Was he not a face? And then he was doing a lot of heel stuff in his promo, it, like saying, like, it looks, I see this. there's more people here than the Arizona Diamondbacks game. And I'm like, oh, shit. He's gone back to insulting the city he's mm. in. I think they're turning him heel, which is a real shame. Uh, he wasn't having a lot of success as a baby face, but as a baby yeah. face, he was, he, he was liked. Yeah. So but, I mean, he's getting the I, same I reaction either way. So what's the really – I mean, you look at it again, like what's really the point? So anyways, he starts off with his promo, and then Double J Jeff Jarrett is entry number two, and I'm going, what <sighs> the fuck? And I'm like, oh, my God. And like, of course, they're probably – Michael Cole's like, WWE Hall of Famer Jeff Jarrett, Double J, blah, 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 blah. Like I'm just – I'm picturing I'm picture in my head. I'm going, thank God I'm not listening to commentary right now. And then he gets in the ring. They do this whole – Thing that they're going to do a duet. Elias turns on him, smacks him in the back with a guitar, eliminates him. Cool. Like, was this really needed? I know it's, again, world wrestling entertainment. you got to entertain the fans. Cool. It was entertaining, but I really couldn't give two shits about Jeff Jarrett. That's just my opinion. Um, and it, only, it only gets worse if you saw Monday Night Raw. They exactly doubled down with Jeff Jarrett and Road Dog. Oh, you didn't know? 
I am the I worst creative person of all time. Baby. They literally took time out of this to sing, have Renee Young mm. dance awkwardly. This is Monday Night Raw, gentlemen. This is the fresh start. A fresh start by inviting back old talent. Didn't I not tell all of you weeks ago that nothing was going to change? And are you shocked that nothing's changed? Don't believe this bullshit of fresh start. It's never happening as long as Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn are on scene. Don't fucking believe anything they tell you because it's not. Stick to NXT. Stick with us. Stick with NXT. Stick to the shit that actually makes sense. Shit to the good wrestling and the takeovers that usually blow out the pay-per-views every single weekend, which this one was pretty close. I'll give it that. It was. I think it was better by, by like that much. That that. It, it, I think it escaped with the skin of its teeth. But uh, anyways, men's Royal rumble match. We had Shinsuke, and then, like you said, Kurt Angle was another. Because I was shocked Kurt Angle was even in it. I really wasn't expecting him. He didn't really last that long, but he was in there. And God, man, I think they should just stop with Kurt Angle. <laughs> this yeah. is this has just got to be done. Like Kurt, it's uh, it's over, bro. Just Kurt Kurt later. Angle is my favorite WWE superstar of all time. And you could see my frustration when seeing your biggest WWE hero not only just have a short time in the World Rumble, but if you guys saw Monday Night Raw, he lost again he to Baron Corbin. Edges, man. <laughs> he tapped out to his own mood to Drew McIntyre yeah. like a couple of weeks ago. Stop. Let him be but, GM again, okay? I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't know. One Where's his son? Out, a lot of NXT chants throughout both women's and men's Royal Rumble, and that was for the uh, NXT people. And uh, the NXT people we got, like Johnny Gargano number six, I jumped out of my seat and like, oh my god, he's like, he's in the Rumble. Like I was, I was, I was awesome with that. Uh, so Gargano was in the Rumble. Uh, Pete Dunne, which was got a really good mm-hmm. pop for, it, and Alistair Black got a really, really good pop. Uh, Alistair Black obviously going to have a I think he has a bright future on the main roster I don't think he's going to be one of those people to get pushed under the carpet I kind of see Vince really liking him he's a different character his mystique he brings that kind of Undertaker that kind of character feel to his character so I think it's something different that they're they're going to look at that and okay we're going to push this guy because he's different from the rest of the pack and um, they I think they see a lot of potential in him I think I can see H building up a good reputation for him for Vince McMahon um, besides that, the Royal Rumble was actually pretty decent, I thought. Um, one thing I want to talk about is No Way Jose. Um, fuck, this guy is literally Adam Rose 2.0. Literally the same group of people, all enhancement talents. He comes out with a conga line, and he gets eliminated in two seconds, basically the same way as Adam Rose. Like, it's... it's He's literally Adam Rose 2.0, and poor guy, because he's actually... A decent wrestler and looked mm-hmm. like he was getting some decent take in NXT and now he's on the main roster. Rest in peace. It's only a matter of time before No Way Jose is released and he's AEW bound. I guarantee it. So, other than that, Royal Rumble, pretty decent. Uh, we had the obvious Kofi Kingston spot. We were wondering what he was going to do. The little roll on the ring apron to the stairs. You know, that was, that was all right. Um, there was another one where he like fell out and he landed on Xavier Woods, which yeah. I've heard it was was not supposed to happen. Like this was just mm-hmm. an accident. But yeah. it's it's getting tough. I feel like it's getting tougher and tougher to think of new ideas. So sure, um, we'll see if maybe he has a better idea next year. Okay, I just seen that in your background. That's the most cringe part of the Women's Royal Rumble with Maria and Alicia Fox. That was literally <sighs> cringe worthy. Anyway, the crushing the of the heads. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about the men's. Um, I think Rey Mysterio had a good showing. I think he still got it, man. The guy's still athletic as hell. Uh, I think who else had a really good Mustafa Ali had a pretty good showing. I mentioned that already. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Andrade, he was part of the Final Four. Yep, yep. Uh, so he got his time in there. And then uh, we got at the end. Uh, yeah, a lot of people were happy that we're there, and I'm like, you casual fucks. <laughs> You guys buy into this crap, and that's why they keep doing this shit. So our truth is making his entrance, but he gets attacked by Nia Jax. And now there's this article going around saying Nia Jax purposely hurt our truth, and he was seen being really heated because Nia Jax didn't protect our truth during that spot, and he got really hurt. And he tweaked his ankle or something. I'm like, he looked fine on SmackDown. I don't understand. Um, anyways, so there's that. But uh, they decided to put Nia Jax in number 30. Or sorry, number 30. Uh yeah, number 30, to enter the men's Royal Rumble. And from there, I'm just going, what the fuck are they doing here? She gets spot after spot taken. 
Uh, finally, the RKO, which I think everyone was looking forward to, just seeing her getting RKO'd. And she gets eliminated. And I'm like, okay, well, here come the women activists because a woman just got her ass fucking beat by men and eliminated in the men's Royal Rumble. I'm like, if you're going to put the woman in there, you make her win it. Or else you're going to get in shit. Plain and simple. I think that was a gutty call by WWE to do that. Just saying. I think the better thing would have been was to put Becky Lynch. I agree with you. Put Becky Lynch in there. Have her not take spots from anybody because you kind of want to stay protective there. And then, you know, make her win the thing. Like, I think there's a there's a chance that they could have done something way better than what we got. I was sitting there going, what the fuck? I, I didn't get out of my seat. Everyone was popping out of their seat going, <laughs> like, I, I sat in my seat. Did not once get up. And I'm like, you casual idiots. Why the fuck do you buy this shit? This is not good at all. This is terrible, creative. Hated, hated the idea of Nia Jax being in there. Thank God she didn't win it or else I would have fucking had a f- flipping, swearing vlog video. But uh, we ended up getting Braun Strowman and Seth Rollins. I knew that was going to be the last final two. Seth Rollins ends up winning the Royal Rumble. Good. Another winner that's two years in a row. We've actually had Royal Rumble winners we've wanted. <laughs> so, Hey, but uh, last year, remember, both people lost. So I... Yeah. I have very little faith on what they're going to do with these winners. Mm-hmm. Um, but real quick, uh, I want to put in my two cents about Nia Jax. Um, but, okay, so I'm perfectly okay for the women to be in the World Rumble. This is not me hating on I'm you know, okay gender watch. It's just the wrong, the wrong idea. I felt like it was the wrong uh the wrong position. I felt like Nia Jax should have entered in the middle of the Royal Rumble. Then she could have like thrown out some cruiserweights or whatnot, and then get thrown out. The fact she came out at the end, I just it, it, to me the end of the Royal Rumble is important. Like you're setting up the final four, and I just felt like it was bad placement by Nia Jax. Now for everyone else on the social media, there is a guy. I don't know if you heard of him, uh, Kyle. I forget what his name, but there's this guy who's a fight promoter for this boxing promotion. And he wrote this article about how Nia Jax getting beat up by men was bad publicity for the WWE. It was so bad, this and that, and WWE should be ashamed of herself. I just want to say for the record, number one, Nia Jax assaulted R-Truth and took his spot to get into the Royal Rumble. She knew what she was getting into. She knew she was getting into the ring with men. And for the record, I want to just say it is never okay to assault a woman. But I just want to say Nia Jax assaulted R-Truth first, stole his spot, got into the ring. And I just want to say no men in the ring touched Nia Jax. In fact, most of them were pretty shocked that she was in the ring. Rey Mysterio never touched her. Mustafa Ali never touched her. Randy Orton stared her down and never touched her. Okay. They didn't do anything until Nia Jax attacked them. Okay? I just want to say for the record. So for everyone saying, oh, it was so bad that they all beat up Nia Jax, I just want to throw it out there that she attacked all of them first. Once again, it's never okay to strike a woman, but I just want to say, you know, it's mm-hmm. this might sound crazy, uh, Kyle, but I think it made Nia Jax pretty strong. She was in the ring with the men, and she was actually beating them up. So yeah. whether you I, like I it or not. I that factor. I just I thought it was a fucking terrible idea. They yeah. should have done this early. I agree with you. They should have done it earlier in the match to have it be at the end like that. And I'm like, whatever. Like, they could have done someone way better to botch our truest entrance. They could have had a surprise <laughs> entrance or something there. Like, just well, you, to me, you just... Mm, well, you know, left, good old Vince. sour taste. You know, good old Vince. Oh, if my son Roman can't be number 30, I'll just have to get another Samoan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my Roman. God, man. Roman! <laughs> you can't be wrong there. <laughs> oh, fuck. Roman. Yeah, so Thrawn's winning. So it's tough to me to forgive Royal Rumble a decent rating here because it was so damn long. I would giving it only a three out of five uh, for the pay per view itself because two the two wrong points are going to it was too goddamn long and some of the creative decisions that I didn't agree with. But I'm giving it at least a three out of five because I enjoyed myself. A lot of it was entertaining. Yes, I'll, putting my creative insight aside. Um, I enjoyed myself, so I'll give it a good three out of five for me. I'm I'm doing the same three out of five. I'm with Kyle, it was way too long. If it was shorter, I think he honestly would have gotten a higher score for me. But credit to to Vince, we get two years where the people who we wanted to win did win. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I said, both winners from last year lost at WrestleMania, so I'm just a little bit nervous. Have no faith in Vince. We'll have to wait and see. We'll see if my prediction comes true, which might be a good outcome. <laughs> so we'll see. So yeah, takeover wins again from us. 
And mm-hmm. we'll have to tally up the votes and uh, see who won this. Because uh, I didn't tally up both. I'll tally up for the next show. I don't know if you did. Uh, but I'll tally up the 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 points here for our picks uh, for next show. Um, other than that, guys, we're going to get into the tweets. We have some fan tweets to go over. If you guys want to tweet into the show, you can tweet us anytime you want. Just make sure you're using the hashtag AskTheNext. Uh, now with going to be added with an extra E. So put the E after the end, ask the next, and then we'll answer your questions on the show. So we'll start off with Datila. I got, I don't even know where to start. The whole show is amazing. She's talking about takeover. Uh, my favorite match was Gargano Ricochet, as was ours. 100% that match was match of the night and a leading match of the year candidate already for 2019. Can't wait to see Meltzer give that thing 800 stars out of 800 stars. Oh, that was so great. Stars. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <she laughs> I'm asked, sorry, guys. And for she those of you who are watching the live video, sorry. Yeah. And she asked, what was your favorite match of the night? And you just heard me say it. Gargano and Ciampa for sure. Mm. Or for Gargano and Ricochet for sure for me. I think it might be for you, Michael, unless you have something different. But... So, yeah, it's for me too. And honestly, in second place for me was the tag team match. I just felt yeah. Aleister Black. Something was just – it wasn't their best match. No. And I felt like the uh, takeover from last year's January blew them out of the water. I don't know. It's a, uh, Gargano versus Andrade was tough. It's a tough bar to – to top last year so i don't know if that contributed to it but it just felt like a tv match and i think you said it kyle right it just felt like a regular, TV, a regular match. tv match yeah. mm-hmm. the big story was what happened after so mm-hmm. um the teal also puts what was your instant reaction to night jacks beating up our truth and taking a spot i was saying does he literally i you can ask no self fell i was like what the fuck <laughs> i was just like really i was just not impressed not impressed whatsoever mm-hmm. Uh, for me, I stand by my word. It was wrong placement, wrong time. Should have been in the lower card or the middle of the Royal Rumble, and it's just, I, I, it's, it's rather not. Mm-hmm. I didn't like it. Wrong placement. Uh, she also puts, "Will you be watching halftime heat on Sunday?" Uh, so we kind of went over this a little bit. I'll be catching the replay as I have to watch the halftime show because I'm a SpongeBob fan. But I'm sure Michael Chow will be wa- catching halftime heat and live tweeting about it. So make sure you guys are following. At Michael Chow TV. If you're watching the YouTube version, it's right at the top, right above his head. At Michael Chow TV, that is his Twitter handle. You can also follow myself at Real Kyle Masters. Everything is up there and in the description for you guys to click on. So Michael will be watching it live. I'll probably be catching the replay later on. And then her final question is: Where do you think WWE is going with the whole Daniel Bryan and Rowan pairing? Also, uh, who do you think will challenge Bryan at WrestleMania? I I've seen a lot of people saying Luke Harper and Bray Wyatt might eventually join, making a new Wyatt family. I don't think I want to see that again, because it's. But I wouldn't put it past WWE because that's a whole rinse and repeat thing that I keep telling you guys happens in WWE and it happens because it's right in front of your eyes. So I wouldn't doubt that to happen. Um, it'd just be weird because it's something different. It's not a Bray Wyatt kind of thing to do. He's more mysterious and and dark rather than this whole hippy dippy bullshit. So and it's even weird seeing Rowan in that attire too. <laughs> It's, just, it's fucking different. It just, oh, I, 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 have you seen his entrance video? It's Rowan, except the O is a recycled symbol. Oh, shit. <laughs> Does he have that stupid music he had before? Like the I little banjo remember. playing? <laughs> it's, uh, uh, man. By the way, where where is Bray Wyatt? I don't understand. A lot of people think he's think being he's repackaged, but his, his, his character's fine. I don't understand yeah. why he can't just... I personally believe because it obviously looks like Braun Strowman is no longer the guy. I would personally enjoy Braun Strowman versus Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania. Have the old uh, teacher versus the former student. Guys, just do it. Braun Strowman's going nowhere. Put Braun, put Bray Wyatt back in this. So, I don't know. And the final question comes from Tiffany, my co-host on the All Elite podcast. She puts, mm. uh, "What matches would you like to see at NXT Takeover Brooklyn?" Mm, that's a good question. Um, I would love to see a Gargano and Velveteen Dream. I'd love to see an Adam Cole and Tommaso Ciampa. I'd love mm-hmm. to see the War Raiders and my boys, the Street Profits, finally get a chance at the <laughs> championships. But highly they unlikely. They lost. Yeah. Um, and for the women's, I'd, I'd go with the, a Candice LeRae versus uh, um, Shannon Baszler for the women's championship. That would be my guesses. Mm-hmm. Or that'd be my picks. That's what I want to see. 
I think that has potential oh. to be a really stacked card. I think you would think to say. I don't know. What, Michael, do you have any other matches you'd like to see? Uh, for me, let's see here. I think a fatal four fatal four way would be good. Uh, it looks like Shayna Baszler and her goons have been beating up every single woman on the roster. So I don't ha, have Can we you ever if Regal purposely puts the horsewoman into the fatal four way <laughs> to face to face for the championship, and that causes like a like a scene between them. That's something different. Like they don't they haven't they don't really that do stuff good. like that. So you that know, like have Shayna versus Maria versus. Uh, uh, Jasmine, Jasmine versus yeah, Jasmine versus Candice LeRae, and Candice LeRae ends up taking advantage <laughs> of that. You know what I mean? Like I could see that happening, um, but that'd be cool. But yeah, I'd, Fatal Four would be cool. Yeah, yeah. And maybe um, I feel like he lost the title for a reason. I'd be pretty stoked. I think a Ricochet versus Tommaso Ciampa at WrestleMania uh, for the NXT Championship would be great. That'd be dope. That'd be great. So um, even if Gargano and Gargano Ricochet want to go at it again? Fucking take my money, man. That match was insane. If you guys can do better than that, that'd be match of the year already. You couldn't beat it. You wouldn't be able to beat it. Um, anyways, uh, other than that, that was all the questions we had for the show. Guys, again, if you want to tweet and ask us any questions for our next episode, just tweet us, hashtag ask the next, and we'll answer it uh, to the best of our abilities uh, for the sh- for the next show, which we'll get to. It's yeah, next week is gonna start fresh. We're gonna be reviewing NXT, covering the main roster a little bit uh, here and there. Obviously, not going fully fledged on the main roster. We kind of just touch base, but our main focus, mm-hmm. obviously, here is uh, NXT because it is a brand in our minds. Other than that, guys, just a couple closing announcements here. Uh, the NHB Slammy Awards are in the process of being getting together. It's really tough for us to get this show done when there's so much going on right now, especially. But now I'm back. Michael's back. We may be able to get it sometime this month out to you guys. Um, whether it be we do a, a, a podcast and do the show in the same week, um, it might look like we might have to do that. So we'll try to get it out to you guys and, and try to, me and Michael will discuss it and try to find a date uh, for you guys to uh, enjoy a Slammy Awards we like doing every single year. So mm-hmm. we'll get that organized to let you guys know soon. So you're going to want to keep updates. So make sure you're following the next pod. It's uh, The Next Pod. So spelled N-E-X-T uh, in pod on Twitter. Make sure you're following myself or Michael Chow TV on our Twitter handles because we also will retweet those and keep in touch for the uh, Slammy Awards. Other than that, guys, I want to do a couple plugs for the network, um, and that is the All Elite Podcast with myself and Tiffany. Um, we do an All Elite Wrestling Podcast. We do coverage of this growing brand right now with all the news and rumors for that uh, that brand, so make sure you guys are going to tune into that and follow All Elite Pod uh, on Twitter as well, and make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash NHBWR, so you know when we're going live, and make sure you are following that Twitter handle because we are just going to be like the Young Bucks, dropping podcasts whenever we want and showing up whenever we want and giving you guys surprise episodes. So make sure you are following the the Twitter account for that. We'll tweet out before we do go live. And then lastly, the new show on the network, um, and that is uh, the Lowdown Show Retro. The gate these guys are going to be doing, uh, this is Corporate Cappy and Tyler Jones. These guys are going to be doing uh, some retro Attitude Era stuff, uh, reviewing old bras, reviewing old pay-per-views. <laughs> you, guys, you guys are watching... <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, I gotta interrupt. Yeah. There goes Ford Swago <laughs> interrupting the Women's World Rumble. Boo! Boo! <laughs> But Gosh, yeah, guys, damn. Lowdown Show Retro for all your retro review needs is on the network as well. They're going to be live every Thursday, so go check them out on the network on Spreaker, iTunes, or Stitcher Radio, and it'll be available on YouTube as well. Um, but other than that, there's also a UK coverage. If you guys are into your NXT UK and UK wrestling coverage, our pal across the seas, Craig Messi, has his new show up and running, and that is the Near Fall UK News. He's calling his podcast, so go give him some love. The first episode is actually on YouTube and on Spreaker, iTunes, and Stitcher radio live right now so we'll give that a lesson the guy does his, his homework on a lot of uk stuff and is very very knowledgeable in the uk wrestling brand especially nxt uk so you want to go take give him a listen uh with his uh podcast so go check him out he is also available on the no holds barred network um other than that i don't have any other closing remarks michael if you had do you have anything to add in the closing remarks here no, that was a good show, and uh, <laughs> sorry, it was Janet, as long. It's not as long as Royal Rumble, but it was a long show. <laughs> it was, it was good. You know, it's February now. January's in the books, so we'll see, guys. We're on the road to WrestleMania. 
Mm-hmm. I always consider WrestleMania basically if, – if it's like a TV show, it's basically the end of the season. They yeah. start fresh after that. Huh. Are we going to get the superstar shakeup again? I don't know, and huh. we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll, we'll see, see what, what happens. happens. So, guys – that's going to do it for the show. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening to us live or listening to us after it is live for episode 14 of the next podcast, our NXT TakeOver and Royal Rumble Review show right here on the No Holds Bar Network. You can listen to us live every week on Spreaker. Uh, you can also check out us after uh, the show is live on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher Radio. Uh, for all network updates, make sure you guys are following the Twitter handle at NHB Network. And you can follow us at the next pod. Uh, also on Twitter as well. You can follow myself at Real Kyle Masters and my co host at Michael Chow TV. Again, guys, I'm your host, as always, the self proclaimed greatest host and CEO of the No Holds Bar Network, Kyle Masters. And I'm always joined by my other host. He is the host that runs the West Coast, Hollywood Michael Chow. And guys, we will see you for the next episode.